Not long after the 2010 Deepwater Horizon disaster, the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative was created, designed to fund an investigation of the largest offshore oil spill in history. Gomri quickly became one of the most successful research collaborations in the history of marine science. Today, as the initiative draws to a close, the breadth of the research is unprecedented. It's an amazing story, and all started with a phone call. I received a phone call asking if I would consider being in charge of a program to do basic research on the spill. I agreed that it would be interesting to do this, but I said, look, it really has to be independent, fully independent that it had to be modeled entirely like the National Science Foundation with respect to proposal submission and request for proposals. There was one other major stipulation. All the data that's been collected will be available in perpetuity for people to draw on and compare it to a future study. So I agreed to form the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative. Funded by BP and a partnership with the Gulf of Mexico Alliance, Gomery is a $500 million, 10-year program operated in collaboration with academia, industry, government, and non-governmental organizations. From a scientific point of view, this was an incredible opportunity to really understand how the ocean responds, how the system really functions. Ultimately, Gomery funded thousands of scientists including many overseas partners, working in a wide range of oil-related disciplines. They touch on ecology, physical oceanography, and chemistry, and we have had a number of really interesting findings across all three of those disciplines. One of the issues with the Deepwater Horizon oil spill is that there wasn't a lot of baseline information about a lot of the species that were examined in the Gulf of Mexico prior to the spill. Scientists focused on commercially important species like red snapper and mahi-mahi, as well as more exotic, such as lionfish and six-skilled sharks. We now have this baseline information, so in the next bill we'll be able to better assess impacts. I'm using DNA barcoding to look at gut contents of unidentifiable fish. I guess I'm a fish detective. And as newer technologies evolved, scientists began to launch a series of elaborate experiments. First drifter deployment now. And go! One of the most complex was designed to predict where the wind, waves, and currents of the Gulf would take surface oil after a major blowout. And go! Knowing where it goes is a big deal, because if you don't know where the oil is going to go, then it's hard to prepare people and set up the cleanup, things like that. Initial results yielded stunning real-time visualizations of ocean currents that will help modelers predict the movement of oil during future spills. The glamorous part of research and what looks good in a movie is operations on a vote. A major part, in fact, probably 80% of the work is done in a laboratory where it can be repeated, which is really the essence of science. What we've done is we've removed the heart from the animal What's going into the heart right now is physiological saline. This stimulates the blood that's in the fish. We expose fish to concentrations of oil that were actually measured in the Gulf of Mexico during the spill and then measure cardiovascular function. We've shown that cardiovascular function is compromised um, due to oil exposure. Without this complete understanding, we do not truly know what are the most sensitive indicators of impact by an oil exposure. We have also learned about how oil, when under high pressure, as it would be, in the deep parts of the Gulf, explodes into the water column, how the bubbles of oil disperse when it comes to the surface. There's still some debate about where the oil went, but the models that have been most recently run show that some of the oil was consumed by bacteria and reduced down to carbon dioxide. Some of the oil ended up in the marshes where it's still located today. 
there is a fairly significant amount of oil that's embedded in the sediment out in deep water. What we see in many spills is that eventually the environment recovers, whether it's to the original state or to a slightly altered state depends on the spill. But it was the introduction of dispersants to slow the spread of Deepwater Horizon oil that tested scientists. The jury is still out. We have uncovered a number of good news, bad news stories that in some cases dispersants helped and in other cases they hindered the process of degradation of oil. One of the major things we've learned in previous spills is how to deliver dispersant from airplanes and how to predict its movement. Injecting dispersant at the wellhead also had not been done routinely. The next time a deep water blowout occurs, they'll have new information that will better inform that decision. We have learned that the fisheries indeed are safe. That is, the concentrations of oil in the fish that are now being harvested for market, for consumption, are safe. So it's not a matter of the sky is falling, not at all. I think in, in many aspects, the Gulf is certainly resilient and it has responded incredibly to, to this very, very large and significant perturbation. It's certainly doing better than a lot of people thought it would be doing. But what makes the scope of the Gumry Initiative truly remarkable is that its research board decided to go beyond simply funding scientific research. The unique thing about the Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative is that the entire 10-year program is collaborative. I don't know of something else in environmental science, certainly nothing this big in oil spill science before. Anytime you put teams of 30, 50, 70 scientists together, they start forming new relationships and they approach science in a different way. A legacy of new ideas, new directions. I look at these new generations of scientists who are doing research in the Gomery and say, Wow, I'm, I'm glad I'm not competing with them because this is a smart group of people, very intelligent, very innovative in what they're doing. I don't think that I will lose touch with the vast majority of my colleagues who have worked with me. Even if we don't necessarily pursue joint projects, we will continue to be aware of each other's work and continue to influence each other's research directions. And I think that is an important part of the legacy of Gomery. Collaboration has been I think crucial because it forces people to get out of their comfort zones and talk about things in a larger context and ask the question, then what? And then what? And then what? They might ask questions we never thought to ask. That's probably another one of the really big legacies we'll leave behind. One of the greatest accomplishments is over 1,500 graduate students that will go on to be the next generation of scientists that will understand what collaborative research is all about. And their scientific uh, capability, their ability to do research, their ability to know and understand the ocean is a legacy for all of us. Those are going to be the people who have the answers to the questions that we'll be asking over the next 50 years. And it's going to go long past Gomery because those students will have students will have students. I look around, I'm starting to see more women, more people of color, and that's a good thing. There have been social barriers in the past. Gomery allowed the funding of groups of scientists that included academia, they included private sector, they included scientists from other parts of the world. Here in Hamburg, Germany, scientists are collaborating with a team from Johns Hopkins University to develop better ways to ease the impacts of future oil spills. In our experiments, we are replicating the exact environmental conditions we're having down the Gulf of Mexico. It's really a miracle that this oil spill brings uh, people together from all over the world, uh, are independent of uh, the language of the country uh, where they are coming from. Another major Gomery effort was funding robust outreach and public education initiatives. Gomery has invested in outreach that will continue far beyond 2020 and the impacts that have been made to, to children that have been part of outreach programs. 
A really important of Gomery's model was to put the science out into the public's eyes, and that has actually created a really interesting community of outreach specialists across Gomery that now work together to build larger outreach tools. We really work in terms of uh, uh, teaching uh, young people, uh, high school students, college students, to try to impart the love of science to them. We absolutely have to be able to explain that wonder and awe uh, that we feel uh, in the science, in, in understanding natural phenomena. Each of the individual projects have generated an unprecedented number of publications in the scientific literature that will be legacy articles going forward. In addition, Gomery established this philosophy of having very open and very shared science. Um, part of that is the open data sharing policy. All of the scientists are required to upload their data into a database and that will be around forever. That will be a resource that we can all go back to to understand what happened after the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. Gomer's legacy will be tremendous, far more than I ever anticipated when this program even began. When you think about it, there's going to be more science done in this 10-year period in which Gomery was the leading science element uh, in the Gulf of Mexico than was done in all the time before related to the Gulf of Mexico. It really, I think, is a model for going forward to how big investments can be made and, and, and should serve as an inspiration for what can be done uh, from those investments, what can be achieved. We have teamed together in a way that's allowed us to carry out fundamental research on a major problem for society. And at the same time, to produce new knowledge, new information, to provide discovery that has application to improving the human condition. This provides a model for the future. When funds become reduced from the federal government or from the state governments, it is a way to mobilize society constructively to address a very important societal problem. That we're living in a time when drilling for oil can lead to enormous economic and environmental problems. The Gulf of Mexico Research Initiative has provided a valuable roadmap to help scientists respond to future technological challenges. Gomery's discoveries also clearly demonstrate to the public, industry leaders, and politicians the urgent need to strike a balance between developing new sources of energy and relying on what nature can safely provide. To learn more about Gomri, visit dispatchesfromthegulf.com and gulfresearchinitiative.org 